So I realized I have some plywood in frame. There's really nothing I could do about it. But um, for this next series, I'm going to be showing you how I built this dog crate. This is actually um, a crate built for two dogs, two dachshunds to be exact. So it actually has um, bypass door, barn style doors on the front and two separate sections to the crate. I'm obviously filming this intro pretty far in advance of when the video will be posted. And that's just because since this is a Christmas present, it's going to be leaving the space um, later this afternoon. And I wanted to get at least one intro with it behind me so you could get an idea of what the series is going to be about before it does leave. But essentially, obviously the doors lock and you have the interior slide for one side. And then the door that bypasses over the other door for the other side. Now this is a special hardware kit in order to get these bypass doors. I'll tell you which one I got. And um, like I said, this is also pretty self-explanatory for a build. I made 95% of this out of recycled two by sixes. So I'll show you how I cut those down, rip them up and get them ready to build something like this. So for a little bit of context, these are the recycled beams I'm talking about when I say I'm using old, old lumber. Um, this video is actually on my channel, but I redid a room in my parents' house um, over the springtime. And the beams I kept, these were old ceiling joists I took down. My best guess is the lumber is probably from the 50s. So it's just a nicer grade of pine than you find in the stores today. Now, by all means, you could use modern pine, but it just won't take stain as well. Um, the original photo that I just showed was what the customer sent me. He told me to use my creativity, so I kind of came up with the craftsman style design. You can see this is the older lumber I have. The grain's a lot tighter. Um, it's not as pale as this white, white pine that you get, at least from Lowe's nowadays. I think these beams that were in the room were probably yellow pine, so they're just a nicer grade of lumber. They're going to machine better. They're going to stain better being like that. Luckily, um, most people that are redoing their houses, especially if you live around people that live in older houses, this stuff gets thrown out all the time if you do want some of this older lumber. So basically what I'm doing to start is I'm rough cutting a bunch of pieces. Um, I'm working off, this isn't the design I am necessarily came up with, but I'm basically working off that. It's a craftsman style design, so the legs are going to be tapered. So I just modified a planing jig I have in my shop. Um, in order to cut this taper, you could see I lined up the taper marks with the edge of the jig. I put a cleat next to it at an angle so that I could cut repetitive um, legs. And then it just slides against my fence. You could see it's a very, it's essentially um, a planing jig. I turned into a cha tapering jig just for this. And then you could see that this is the leg I'm going to be left with. So I'll obviously cut four of these using that jig. And these I tried to cut out the nicer boards. Some of these boards were a little messed up. They were full of screws and nails because um, plaster board was attached to them. So I had to take all that stuff out before working with it as well. And then um, since the these were added after the room was built, the edges of, the, of them were, were tapered to fit under a roof. So I obviously cut all that off. And then once I had my four pieces, I used the exact same jig. I flipped the legs and I just cleaned up that one edge. So then I went through and I, I cut rough cut pieces for all of my, my uh, horizontal rails. You can see I have a rough cus cut list down there. You could pause this if you want to get a rough idea of the size of that piece. And then I made sure to check the hardware that I'm using because they're going to have recommendations and I needed at least two and a half inches between the hardware and the top. So that front rail was the dimensions of that was kind of decided by those by those um, recommendations. So I'm just once again going through taking these pieces and just rough cutting all of my pieces down to size. All of these horizontal rails are going to get tenons. So they're all rough cut. They're not finished size, but you can see the pile I'm left with the four legs and then a stack of shorter sides and then a, a stack of longer fronts. So these were uh, two by sixes. I'm going to be cutting most of these down to three inches, I believe was what I decided on. And then um, the, I have a middle piece that's a, 
a little bit thinner, more like an inch and a half. So like I said, since this is older lumber, it's a nicer grade of lumber, this stuff was pretty flat. So I was able to rip one side down on the table saw to get it nice and flat instead of using a joiner. And then I could just flip it over and cut this down to dimension. It made life a lot easier. Getting something straight from the store, you could probably do this, but I wouldn't let um, lumber from Lowe's sit around too long before ripping it down because that stuff starts to move on you pretty quickly. But you can see I'm just taking this stuff and I'm cutting it down to, to the dimensions I have. I ended up using almost all this lumber, so the offcuts you see I save and I use for different parts of the project. And then just cutting down my other sizes. I, like I said, I believe there was little, I think it was three and a half inches and two inches were the, the two sizes I used. So this stuff is a little over an inch and a half and I didn't want it that thick, obviously. Um, one of the fastest ways to make something not look like it's made out of dimensional lumber is to cut down on the thickness so the furniture doesn't look as bulky. So I was going to plane this, but I was taking off almost a half inch from this material. I believe I left, I went with an inch and a quarter or so with it. So what I did was I ripped off the pieces on the table saw first, big chunks of them. You can see I'm going through and just ripping down the sides so I didn't have to spend all afternoon at the planer. Once again, this is easy to do because this, this lumber is pretty true um, because it's older. The grain's tighter, it didn't move around as much over the years. So that is the stack I'm left with. And then once I have this, I'll take it to the planer and I'll finish finish this up. Now, if you don't have a planer, you can make these cuts and then sand them um, on the table saw. The legs I kept the thickness they were. Um, so these are, I think I passed them through once on each side, a very light pass in order just to remove the rough material. And then my other pieces, like I said, I believe they were around an inch and a quarter is what I ended up with. None of this stuff was sort of exact. I worked by eye on projects like this, not necessarily off of plans. The stuff I write down is, is solely for the video, not really for myself. So it's, it's more of what I think looks good and then I, then I cut it down. So then the big thing with the deciding factor for the front, since these are by bypass doors, one of the wheels will, will hang out pretty deep. So I can't mount um, this front rail like I would the bottom rail because you could see how much that by, I don't want the hardware or the door to stick back past the front frame of the piece. So I was happy that was something I thought of beforehand before cutting all of my mortises. You can see I'm gonna have to shim it up even more so than I have it shim now in order for those front doors to not go past the front of the frame. So from there I started on the sides. Like I said, there's gonna be a bottom rail, a top rail, and a middle rail. Mine's just not gonna be as thick as in the photo. So my bottom rail is a little bit lower. I just placed, like I said, I placed these on there about where I thought they looked good. And then I marked where those were on my legs. From there I marked center on that inside edge of the leg, all of my pieces. One of the rails I was using, I marked center on there and then my, my mortise bit is 3 eighths of an inch so I went 3 sixteenths off either edge and made three marks and then I just transferred all of those to the pieces. So that's what those three lines are, center and then the two edges of where the mortise is going to be. I set up my mortising machine and I could cut all of these at once with, with the depth set as well as the fence set. Now there was a reason why I pre-tapered these before cutting the mortises. That reason is escaping my mind right now at the moment, but that's why you could see I'm using a shim to prop these up so they're level because they are tapered. If you cut the mortise with them flat against the the fence, they'll, they'll come um, at an angle. Like I said, there was a reason why I tapered these before cutting the mortises, but I can't truly remember um, what that was. It might have been something with how I set up the jig. Regardless, you could see all I'm doing is, is cutting, putting a little shim under there so that it's flush with the, the, top, the top bracket that holds this down. It looks a little bit like it's a pain, but it's, it's really not. And then I could just go through and um, do this where I have all of my marks. So it's just three mortises on the inside of all of the legs. 
and I could just go through. Since this is pine, it was pretty easy to cut these mortises, and I'm going about an inch into all of the pieces, about an inch deep mortise. This is the one at, on top. See, once again, I still have to have it shimmed. So then once those were done, um, I realized that the top one is actually thicker than the, the, the middle piece is the, is the skinniest. The top is still thick. So I had to go through and recut those mortises. I wanted to show you I did that in case you noticed in the video that top mortise became bigger. And then I could finally calculate the math for this, this offset. And basically I need it to be set back three inches in order for the doors not to go past the front of the piece, which I do not want. So that was kind of how I mocked all that up. So to lay this out, I need 24 inches deep for the dog. So this is going to be the front or the back, and this will be the front or the back. But basically we're working as this being the front. So for the that hardware, I need three inches, which means the hardware is going to be mounted recessed from the front. So that's what this pencil marks for. That was three inches, and I have this at just about three. Now the back for this is going to, um, the middle is going to be right about here. So the goal is to get to about 24. So because this is where the doors are going to stop, I'm going from front to back to get about 24, and then I can measure in between the two, and I'm going to round that up to 23 and a half. So my mortises are an inch each, so 23 and a half plus 2 inches for 2 mortises, 25 and a half is how I'm going to cut these. So to cut all my tenons, they're all going to be identical because the mortises are um, the same thickness. I pre-cut a little nub of a scrap. As soon as I get it to fit into the mortise hole nicely, I could go through and cut all of them. So you can see I just have a stop block, which is a, about an inch off the, the blade cut, because that is how deep my mortises are, are. And then, like I said, I raised the, the blade on my radial arm saw in order to make a bunch of these curves. I did a bunch of test cuts until I got it perfect, and then I could cut all of these at one time and then I could um, attach all those pieces. So this is what that one looks like. And then I'm going to show you how I, I dry fit the second one. You could see those curve cuts will leave some material. Usually just hammer those out, use a file and a sander in order to clean them up, and this is how I dry fit all of these. So all of these have to be fit. I always overcut the thickness of these a little bit just to make sure I could sneak up on the fit instead of making them, once they're too big, unless you start gluing on shims and stuff it, um, they won't fit in place so you could just see how all of that fits in there and then I can mock this all together so these are my two sides obviously like I said it's pretty self-explanatory three mortises on that inside edge and then my sides fit into in the place so what I didn't show is cutting down those pieces to 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 depth but once I had that measurement, I, just, I cut all of them, and then I and then I made the tenons. So then on the um, this front and back inside edge, I'm going to be cutting more mortises as well. The back is going to get one, the middle is going to get one, and the bottom is going to get one. So in the back, they're all on the same plane. You can see they're all on the same plane. In the front, this one in the front is going to be kicked out much further because remember the doors are going to be set back but I want the base of the piece to still have a floor. So that will make a little bit more sense once you see this all set up. But you can see that back, they're all in line. Now the backer is going to be a little bit different than the sides, which is why my mortise is centered instead of a little bit lower like I have on the sides. You can see they're all in the same plane, so my back will, will sit flush, but there will be a middle partition, which is what that is. And then this is just cutting the front ones as well. Same process, I go down about an inch. Once I have the 
all the depth stop set as well as the the fence to the mortising machine set I can cut these now if you don't have a mortising machine when I first started out I cut all my mortises with a drill and then I upgraded to a drill press so all this is doable without this machine you just have to make a straight edge jig which is pretty easy to make there's plenty of videos on YouTube which will show you how to do it I don't have one myself and you could cut all these with the drill there's a little more cleanup involved because this, this they cut circular holes instead of square obviously but it is doable so then once again I made sure this hardware was going to clear clear that piece this is a three inch piece which is how I knew I needed at least three inches back so I marked three inches back because my uh, this horizontal rail is going to be a little bit different joinery because I don't want to go through the whole thing and, and uh, mess with the structural integrity of this front piece. So I'm just going to do a little stub tenon on here to hold everything together. Once again, I marked the mortise. could cut this a little bit differently on the mortising machine, but on the mortising ma machine nonetheless, when it's below the fence, you do need a little bit of a shim there so that the, the mortising bit doesn't get stuck in the piece. And I could just cut this shallow mortise um, in the front edge of those two pieces. You can see it on both of those. Then I could go through the same way I did with the sides and measure, add the depths of the mortise, and then all of my pieces will be 43 inches. I could cut them all down to 43 inches, which I did, and then um, with the same setup I could cut my tenons. Same thing with the stop and raising the blade, cutting both sides flip it over like I said cut both sides and that's how I cut all my tenons so they come out just about perfect the stub tenon which isn't as deep like I said I didn't want to go all the way through is the same exact uh, tenon cut it's just not as deep and then that also has a shoulder so I could go through and just remove I believe it was a half inch bit of material on the top and bottom of both sides of this tenon I did that with a simple hand saw and then this one fits into place So then dry fitting all of this, as you can see, is going to be the end of this video. Um, I thought this was only going to be two parts, but I think it might be more along the lines of three parts. forgot how much, um, how long the process was for building this. But essentially the next part of the video will be fleshing out the rest of the frame, and then the third part will be finishing touches. could see the the stub tenon was a little bit harder to get into place so I ended up pulling out some clamps in order to get that in place but I was pretty happy with how the frame turned out no hardware or anything just pure 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 cut joinery holding everything together